Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. The title of this story is Fish Head Part 1. It could be found under the subreddit of r slash scary stories. Narrated by yours truly, Bishop Phonix. The writer of this story is Reddit user Misotonic Dropout. Ten-year-old Alice Barrow stood against the edge of the kitchen, her feet pressed firmly against the cold linoleum floor, almost as if they were stuck there. She had come downstairs for a midnight glass of milk, only to find her mother sitting at the kitchen table in the dark, gently caressing and kissing a large, raw fish head. The fish head was huge, almost the same size as her mother's head. Alice's mother was using both her hands to hold it up and gently stroke the sides of its face the same way she did when she kissed Alice's father. The air in the kitchen was heavy, with the smell wafting off the fish head. It smelt of rotting meat and seaweed. Even standing at the very edge of the kitchen, the stench was strong enough to make Alice gag, almost causing her to become sick. Her mother did not seem to notice the smell, or Alice. She continued kissing the fish head passionately, brushing her fingers along its scales and forcing her tongue deep inside the lifeless, permanently agape mouth. Alice's eyes grew impossibly wide. She was unable to blink or look away. She just stared in disbelief at the strange horror before her. Her body stiffened and her fingers dug deep into the sides of her pajamas, her nails pressing through the fabric and scratching at the skin. Her breathing grew rapid and it took everything she had in her not to scream. As panic set in, her mother still didn't notice her. She kept her eyes closed and continued to kiss the grotesque fish head. All the while, dead, unblinking eyes of the sea creature stared at Alice. She tried to move, to back out of the room, but her body wouldn't let her. Finally, it all became too much for the ten-year-old to bear, and Alice let out a blood-curdling scream. Alice's mother broke from her trance. Her body snapped around to face Alice, dropping the fish head in the process, causing a wet thud as it bounced off the table. Mom! Alice screamed. Honey, honey, shh, shh. Her mom pleaded with a panicked look in her eyes. Why? Why? Alice asked. It's all right. Everything's fine, her mother tried to assure her. Don't be scared. It's, it's just, just mommy's dinner, sweetheart. No, Alice continued to scream. You weren't eating it. You were kissing it. It's gross. You're gross. Shh, Alice. Her mother snapped. Stop it right now. Tears started to well around her eyes when Alice suddenly felt a large, rough hand gently grip her shoulder. Looking up, she saw her father standing behind her, a concerned look on his face. What's wrong? He asked. Is everything... Her father trailed off. Alice watched as his eyes glanced up and over the kitchen table. Over to her mother, his face dropped at the sight of her. Damn it, Rebecca, her father whispered under his breath. Just barely loud enough for Alice to hear. He rubbed his eyes and shook his head for a moment before easing down to his knees beside Alice. They were face to face, close enough that Alice could smell the lamb chops he had for dinner on his breath. Mommy is just playing a game, a very stupid game, her father assured her as he wiped the tears from her eyes. There's nothing to be scared of, baby, okay? But, Alice mumbled, trust me. He interjected. Everything's fine. Alice nodded with a sniffle. Good, he smiled. Now go back to bed. I'll be up in a minute to tuck you in. He placed his hand on top of Alice's head, tussling her hair a bit before getting to his feet. Alice slowly left the room, her body still shaking. Good night, Alice whimpered. Good night, honey. 
her father smiled. Her mother said nothing. She just stayed sad at the table, resting her face in her hands, covering her face. Alice slowly walked back upstairs through the darkness as the angry whispered yelling of her parents found its way to her from the kitchen. What the frick were you doing? said her father's voice. I told you to stop talking to those lunatics. You said it was just a phase. If you actually gave it a chance, you might see what's really going on, echoed her mother's voice. I've already been chosen, but that doesn't mean it's too late for you and Alice to be selected too. Are you freaking crazy? yelled her father. You're too arrogant to see the truth. Perhaps it's out of your understanding. Paul said not everyone could handle it. Paul? You actually listened to that dickhead? It's a freaking cult, Rebecca. A cult full of sad freaking weirdos. Losers. You're wrong. You'll see that one day. But it'll be too late. I can't believe you do that stuff here. In front of our daughter. Our child. She had to learn about it sometime. Paul said we need her. She's important. Just like me. She's never going to learn about any of this. Any of those psychos comes near my child and I'll freaking kill them. Sort yourself out for freak's sake. Or me and Alice are leaving. Alice trudged on to her room. The angry voices slowly fading out more and more the closer she got. She retreated to her bed, leapt onto the mattress, and wrapped herself in the duvet so that only her eyes and the very top of her head remained poking out. She could still hear the muffled shouting going on downstairs, but couldn't make out any of the words now. Not that she wanted to. She hoped and wished for all this to be a bad dream. She laid there for what felt like hours, but by the ticking of her bedside clock, she knew it had only been minutes. Finally, Alice's father appeared in her darkened doorway. He was slightly short of breath, but smiling. He made his way over to Alice and sat down beside her on the edge of the bed. Why was mommy doing that? Alice asked. Is she really playing a game? Alice noticed tears forming in the corners of her father's eyes as he tried to talk. I, he stuttered, I, I don't, no, no baby, she wasn't playing a game. Then why? Alice asked. It was so gross. A tear ran down her father's cheek as he began to chuckle to himself. Yeah, it was gross, really gross. I don't like the fish, Daddy, Alice blurted out as she buried her face under the blankets. It's scary. Her father leaned over her, lifting her slightly from the bed and embracing her. I know, baby, but it's gone now, and I won't let it happen again. Everything is going to be all right. Mommy, Mommy isn't doing the best right now. Honestly, I don't even know everything that's going on with her but I promise everything will be all right. Daddy is here, and I'm not going to let anything bad happen. Okay? Okay, Daddy, said Alice. The words muffled slightly as her face pressed into her father's chest. You know what? How about a bedtime story? Her father asked. I've got one that might make you feel better. Okay, Alice sighed. Her father slid into the bed beside her, and Alice cuddled up against him. Well, he said, when I was a lot younger, before I met your mother, I used to be a surfer. I'd go to the beach each and every day, from lunchtime until it got dark. I'd do nothing but surf. One day, I went out further than I had ever had before. I sat out there on my board waiting for a wave to come, but it wasn't a wave that would come for me. It was a shark. Alice pulled the covers up over her chin, her knuckles white as she gripped the sheets. I saw the fin coming at me, but I wasn't fast enough. It crashed into me and knocked me off my surfboard. 
I stood there paddling in the water as the shark circled around and came back for me. His mouth opened wide, and just as he was about to take a bite out of me, I grabbed my board and drove it into his mouth. He chomped down on it, and I must have hurt him just enough because when I ripped my board out of his jaws, he swam away and left me alone. I swam back to shore, and that's when I noticed it in my board. Her father reached in under his collar and pulled up a necklace over his shirt. In the middle of the necklace was a dangling shark's tooth. A shark's tooth, he grinned. Ever since I worn it around my neck, it's my special little good luck charm. So if I can beat a shark by myself, I think we can take a fish head together. Don't you? I guess so, Alice nodded. That's my girl. Now get some sleep. Alice cuddled up against her father. Slowly, her eyes grew heavy, and she drifted off to sleep. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will upload part two shortly. If you enjoyed this content, please leave a like as it helps my channel. And I hope to see you next time. Stay safe out there, guys.